I guess the obvious question is, if you had taken this very bullish survey, which is a 10-year high uh, for it, it's a very thorough survey, if you had taken this survey in December and January, what kind of response do you think would, you would have gotten and how much different would it be? I think you'd see a little bit of drop in the optimism, but let's come back to the rationale behind that optimism. First, you got a CEO group that's gone through the last two years, so this is all relative. So they see both optimism in terms of the economy and they see their opportunity to actually raise revenues over the next 12 months. The second thing that's really important, though, is their connection to their customers, the ability for them to engage with their customers, satisfy their customers and create that great customer experience. The more trust is created, the more trust that's created, the more loyalty, the more revenue opportunities. And that's why they're confident, particularly around raising the revenues over the next 12 months. As we look here at a graph, I don't know that you can see it, but, but our viewers certainly can, you see how CEO optimism predicting growth in the next 12 months has risen over the past decade from 15% in 2012 to 77% now. Wow, that's crazy, man. It's unusual, but nonetheless, not necessarily unexpected. Here, mm -hmm. let's talk through this. First, you've got an organization, many organizations, particularly those that we surveyed, that have actually adjusted and transformed themselves. They're much more agile, much more nimble, much more reactionary to any kind of threats or opportunities that are coming their way. They're moving with more speed because of digital because of the skills and data that people bring to the table to make faster, quicker decisions. As a result, they're able to move forward. The second part is they've learned a lot. Think about the muscle they've built and the resilience that's been built, particularly over the last two years. That's huge in terms of how do I apply that to future issues, inflation, supply chain, the talent resignation that's happening on a worldwide basis. So the opportunity continues to reside in the mindset of the CEOs and their management teams. What do they say with respect to things that are worrying them? What are their top concerns? Around the globe, cyber, health, and the macroeconomic environments are their top three issues. When you look to the states, it's still cyber, a little less so on the health side of the equation, and it's more on the macroeconomic side of the equation. No surprise when you look at rising rates, inflationary pressures, supply chain, and asset valuations overall. But you also have to look sector by sector. If you were to ask the energy companies, it's climate. It's surprisingly low on a global basis. When you talk to the healthcare companies, when you talk to travel and resort, it's clearly health and pandemic related, and specifically their ability to connect with their customers or attract the talent that they need. Bob, it's Kelly here. Two quick questions I wonder if you can give us some color on. Number one, are they paying out or expect to pay out more in salaries, which we're starting to hear during this earnings season? Number two, what's their general attitude towards work from home uh, persisting? Yeah, great questions, Kelly. Number one, relevant to compensation, the answer is yes. Everybody's pulling every possible lever of change to create more loyalty and trust with their employees and value the work that's being done. So you are seeing that. And that comes through, unfortunately, increasing costs and rising wages. Second, relevant to the work from home, you are seeing much more acceptance of a hybrid approach. No surprise. But particularly coming out of this last wave, you're seeing CEOs and management teams say, how do I get back to some more normalcy a couple more days a week? Because right now we're still in that lockdown mode. And that's particularly relevant in the U.S. The U.S. is probably a little less aggressive in terms of return to work compared to the rest of the world as we look on a worldwide basis and talk to the CEOs that were embedded in the survey.